hard time finding damage back into Lunala, but something that can trade damage a little more evenly. Well, as we head into this first game in the best of three, Alejandro's gonna lead with that Shadow Rider Calyrex as well as the Dondozo. And for Henry, it's gonna be the Lunala and the Incineroar. Incineroar on the field gets an Intimidate into uh, this Dondozo. It does have its attack drop, nothing to mitigate that. Uh, Incineroar, though, gonna have to be a little bit careful here. Loves fighting up against Calyrex, but this is Terra Water Terra Blast Calyrex, as well as Wave Crash as an option on the other side. So two Pokemon that can pump a ton of damage into Incineroar if needed. And of course, Lunala, very threatened by Astral Barrage, but can just protect itself with Wide Guard if it feels like it needs to. But if you Wide Guard, as Tatsuguri just comes in that slot, and it's Dondozo going out on the offense that can feel like a really wasted turn. So I think it's a little bit of a delicate position. You have to imagine it's probably not an Astral Barrage coming in right now, but if that's it. You make that assumption too strongly, Alejandro could definitely punish you for it. I think it's tough too, because in, in this matchup, you look at Henry's Pokemon that could be deemed to be on a bit of the slower side versus Alejandro's, and you also consider Trick Room might be a good option here. You would be able to allow this Lunala to move a bit faster than this really naturally fast Shadow Rider Calyrex, but we are gonna see a pivot here from Alejandro to see that Dondozo get switched out for the Rillaboom. It's going to change this grassy terrain and also give a priority option in case we do actually see the Shadow Rider Calyrex go on the offensive. Meanwhile, it is Incineroar recognizing that two possible water attacks coming out on the other side means it's a good time to go grass type of it. Is the Trastalization spent there is going to make it a lot harder for this Lunala to get away from its weakness to Ghost in the future. Wow, let's just go straight for the Astral Barrage, not even worrying about the threat of the Wide Guard that Lunala has. And look at how that Shadow Shield is barely able to keep it alive. The Moon Guys Beam here, now at least able to fire off in response. It's going to be another super effective attack into the Calyrex. And because it is a Life Orb, that will be able to be a one-hit knockout into that restricted Pokemon. But we're seeing it kind of play out in real time where this Lunala is at such low HP that a Grassy Glide would be enough to finish it off and an unfortunate miss there on the Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, I think a turn with a ton of fireworks. We mentioned that a Rest Brush could have been an option and that is exactly what Alejandro goes for. And with the Grass Trastalization spent onto Incineroar, that's even extra damage because Incineroar goes from resisting the Astral Barrage to taking neutral damage from it. Luckily for Henry, Shadow Shield is just enough for Lunala to weather that storm hang on and KO right back, meaning the damage trade is maybe in Henry's favor because he gets the restriction Pokemon KO'd and while his Lunala is low, you can always try to find a way to fight back into it. The will on top would have really been the ceiling blow there, but does miss it and just has to wide guard through this turn. Uh, well, wide guard is going to be helpful in order to block something like a rock slide that could be coming out, but look at that. The U-turn actually not going to do enough to finish off this Incineroar, provides a pivot to Alejandro so that he can bring something else back in, and it is going to be the Tatsugiri to now pair up with this Dondozo. But what did this Dondozo actually lock into? We saw the wide guard from the Lunala to potentially deal with something like the rock slide, but it's going to be tough to take down this raid boss of a Pokemon now that the Tatsugiri has boosted it up so much. Is it going to be the wave crash though either? That's that's the thing. It's so tough to have to make that call, but it is the rock slide, so Henry gets it right. A yeah, really crucial decision. Manages to wide guard the rock slide, keep both of these Pokemon on the field and give Incineroar the chance to attack. The Will-O-Wisp is going to hit into the Dondozo as well. So it feels good to at least be able to land that to mitigate some of those boosts that that Dondozo did just get to its attack. But you still have to worry about the fact that your Lunala is pretty low and Dondozo is still going to be packing some big wave crashes. Yeah, Dondozo should still have the offense to take down Lunala, but I'm not sure that turn could have gone much better for Henry has the Incineroar hang on through U-turn to stay on the field and land the Will-O-Wisp into Dondozo. And the Incineroar only able to hang on because Lunala wide guards and correctly calls it. It's Rock Slide coming in, preventing two KOs. Now Order Up goes into Lunala and does not get the KO. Lunala survives with three HP after the burn mitigates the attack. Wow, and so that's going to lead this Lunala to be able to go for a Moon Guys Beam. And it's not going to be afflicted by any sort of special attack drop. So that's going to be a pretty good amount of damage with a parting shot. Just another insult to injury after the burn placed onto that Dondozo to drop its attack stat even further. Undoes the order up. Make sure that the Dondozo does not slowly get a chance to boost back up. Grassy Train is the only reason that Lunala is still on the field as well. The Rillaboom from the other side helping to keep this Lunala a little bit help more healthy, help keep the Incineroar a little bit more healthy, uh, and make sure that both of them are able to hang on. This is looking a little more and more bleak for Alejandro. Dondozo is going to be doing so little damage and now has to fight up against an Urshifu on the other side. 
it's always a kind of a strange relationship between an Urshifu and Dondozo. Urshifu, of course, has surging strikes. It's going to be resisted by Dondozo, but because of the auto crit, it's actually a pretty reasonable way to start dealing damage to Dondozo, especially when Dondozo can't deal a ton of damage back. Yeah, you're going to see the order up into the Lunala to finally be able to pick it off, and so that is going to help mitigate some of those attack drops. But I think critically, you're still looking at the fact that Henry still has so many Pokemon left in comparison. Um, so I think you're you're feeling pretty good about the fact that this Urshifu is going to be able to at least get a little bit done. And I wonder if something like the Tornadus would be something that you would be able to uh, switch in at some point, given the matchup. Is Alejandro thinking about that as an option? Alondra definitely has to be worried about whatever the fourth Pokemon is. Tornadus could come in here, give a speed advantage to the Urshifu. Dundas are still dealing damage slowly enough that both of these Pokemon are probably safe through another turn. Uh, the plus three because of the, or the uh, one order up and the uh, boost from Tatsugiri probably put, threatens damage from Rock Slide into Tornadus, but Tornadus is able to just protect as well. It doesn't have to try to worry about that Rock Slide. Something that I'm really interested in, though, is the fact that, like, yes, you have the Tailwind Advantage, but you also have Rain Dance. And it's so difficult to have to work against both of those things because, on the one hand, Henry would love to be able to give over this Mystic Water Rapid Strike Urshifu just a little bit more boost to its power, but you also sort of want to time it with these Dondozos where you're taking out the Dondozo and are also able to deal some amount of damage to this Tatsugiri as well, which, by the way, is carrying Bright Powder, so it might be a little bit harder <laughs> said than done. Yeah, with Bright Powder, there's always a way <laughs> back into the game. I think some well-positioned damage here puts the Dondozo pretty low, maybe in range of another uh, Surging Strikes, which would mean Tailwind plus Surging Strikes just KOs the Dondozo before it can attack and means that uh, Alondra doesn't get attacked this turn. So that is exactly the input. It's first Tailwind, and then should be Surging Strikes coming next. Yeah, Surging Strikes here is going to be enough to clean up this Dondozo, which has not been able to really have too much skin in this game so far. It does leave the Tatsugiri to be able to remove itself from the Dondozo and actually maybe get an attack off if the Bright Powder does come into effect, but you still have the speed advantage if you are Henry, and you know that you really only have to deal with this Rillaboom, but this Rillaboom can be a problem. It has these super effective attacks now into this Urshifu, despite you having the speed. You have Fake Out Pressure and you have Grassy Glide. Rillaboom is Alejandro's best hope here. Maybe up that plus a little bit of Bright Powder. It is good news for Henry that that Urshifu has the speed advantage without having to have the Choice Scarf. Holding Mystic Water meaning can switch to close combat and just take this Tatsugiri off the field if it wants to or deal a bunch of damage into Rillaboom. Tornadus also pretty well positioned where it uh, can deal a ton of damage back into either of these Pokemon. You have to imagine Incineroar will come in and get an Intimidate off onto Rillaboom before this game wraps up. Uh, which can also get one of these Pokemon out of harm's way. If, you know, if it's Incineroar coming into the Urshifu slot while a Grassy Glide or Woodhammer goes that direction and, and wastes a turn of Rillaboom, then that's a turn that Alejandro just does not have. But if Alejandro can get the right targeting down, to attack into the partner while Incineroar comes back in, and then find a way to land some, a Woodhammer into the Urshifu, there's definitely still a path in this game. For sure. And I mean, the Urshifu can feel the pressure. The Rillaboom is putting out so much that Henry does not want to lose that Pokemon right away. And this Incineroar help, will help to make sure that maybe this Urshifu does get a chance to survive one Grassy Glide or so. The Tornadus also going to opt to protect itself. At the very least, it's going to help against this Fake Out. But this Tatsugiri, it, it does have Muddy Water, Dragon Pulse, Icy Wind, and Helping Hand as its moves of choice. And the Icy Wind going to be super effective into this Terra Grass Incineroar that just switched in. The Trastalization probably making the difference there in whether or not that Icy Wind is able to pick up the, the KO on Incineroar, and I think pretty important for Alejandro's chances in this game that it does pick it up that KO. Force Urshifu back on the field, of course, not a Choice Scarf Urshifu. It is able to just protect itself this next turn and give even more time for Tornadus to go out on the offense, but so far, a pretty strong turn for Alejandro. Avoids a hitting into uh, the Tornadus with a fake out and instead just finds the damage into Incineroar, gets a KO, and moves on to the next turn. This is, Tornadus is also, it has a Focus Sash. So like you do have to hit it twice in order to be able to knock it out, but two times might be all that Henry needs. You could see him lock into the Bleak Windstorm, which will be able to do some super effective damage to that Rillaboom, but there's gonna also gonna be a double up there into the Tatsugiri, but whether or not that pays off is going to be important. This Rillaboom has a Grass Terra-type. 
offensive terrestrialization coming out from Rillaboom to kind of undo some of the impact that Intimidate had on the last turn. Helping Hand will go beyond undoing the impact of that Intimidate and make sure this Rillaboom is threatening so much damage. The Grassy Glide is coming out probably into Urshifu. And is it going to be enough to get the KO? It's not with the Intimidate drop. That is so pivotal. This Tornadus is able to hit the Bleak Windstorm onto both targets as well, bringing that Rillaboom down to so low. With the close combat to follow up, this Bright Powder is not going to help keep this Tatsugiri around. Even though the Urshifu is going to get cleaned up to another Grassy Glide, that, that Rillaboom is, um, that's pretty low. Rillaboom should be able to be cleaned up by Tornadus. Always kind of sad, uh, a hard feeling as a player. When you walk all in to a grassy glide, try to pick up a KO and miss it, and then just see that Rillaboom is still on the field at the end of the turn. Could have just had a uh, wood hammer to get the KO. Instead tries to save Tatsugiri by getting the grassy glide KO, misses it, and then doesn't pick up the KO at all. Well, this is a smart positioning, though, by Henry. He's still thinking about the fact that Grassy Terrain is going to give priority to this Grassy Glide. And if you miss a Bleak Windstorm, that could be devastating. So at the very least, you you have the opportunity here to try to get some HP recovery back. And Tailwind doesn't really matter. So you're kind of hoping that maybe there's an opportunity to go for something like this. And, and I think that's smart to just give yourself the guaranteed Bleak Wind net later. This is definitely the safest way through this end game. The Rain Dance means the Bleak Wind cannot miss in future turns. And getting past the grass, the uh, grassy train eventually, either would <laughs> the Rillaboom KOs be Urshifu right now, or it's forced to take two close combats. Yep. So a uh, great call here from Henry. Now the Rain on this next turn, this Tornadus will be for sure able to KO this Rillaboom, even on all the grassy terrain healing that's come through. You still have that Focus Sash to keep you intact from something like a Grassy Glide. So, should all be said and done here as we look forward to the second game. Alejandro lost that Shadow Rider Calyrex so early. How do you feel like he might be able to preserve it for later? The first few turns of this match were absolutely brutal for Alejandro, right? Not only did the trade uh, for Calyrex Shadow not work in his favor. It got a ton of damage off onto Lunala and to Incineroar, but of course paid back with Kafu to crit through the defense boost. The uh, Incineroar to Intimidate and will o -Wisp may just be really hard to kind of find the impact. And exactly like you asked for, here is Calyrex Shadow Rider next to NDD. The nice thing about the follow me too is that because Ndidi also is a normal type, uh, I don't think you care too much about the little moon guy themes, now do you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It would be redirected into an immunity. Now, one big difference with this is when Dondozo was led next to Calyrex Shadow Rider, there were two offensive threats that Henry had to worry about. That's part of why there was no wide guard used on turn one of game one is because you don't want a wide guard while just eating a wave crash back from the other side. But with more emphasis on just the Shadow Rider, it's much easier for the Lunala to just click wide guard here because otherwise it's just a water terror blast coming in or Calyrex Shadow Rider protecting itself. So a lot easier for Lunala to manage one attacker at a time. Well, Tornadus is going to get the speed though in this Lunala's favor. I'm not sure I've actually done my research on the speed tiers between Lunala and Shadow Rider Calyrex and if the Tailwind actually makes a difference here for the Lunala. But it's going to be a luring voice into the Lunala to break the Shadow Shield. With no grassy terrain right now, you don't have a way to actually reactivate that Shadow Shield very quickly. Lunala also becomes confused from the alluring voice, so has to watch out for that on the next turn. Uh, no wide guard that turn. It would have been an opportunity for Alejandro to go out on the offense with a follow me in an astral barrage that would have punished Henry hugely, um, but both players take a little bit safer path through the turn. It's just the shadow shield first, and now the wide guard. Oh man, what a risky attack through confusion without the wide guard. That might have been so much damage coming in, but gets it off. Yeah, there's going to be an Ndidi follow me too, <laughs> just in case. But did the Shadow Rider Calyrex actually go for the big spread damage? Uh, remains to be seen as we do see a speed drop onto the Shadow Rider Calyrex. If we weren't sure before, we do know now that that Lunala should be faster. But with the wide guard in place, that Astral Barrage cannot hit into the two targets. Such a difficult position with Calyrex Shadow Rider and in Psychic Train, meaning that both of the same type of attack boosted moves are spread moves. If Wide Guard happens, there's no way to get damage off. Of course, it's very risky for Henry to keep trying to just get Wide Guards off because he could hit himself into confusion. So this turn, there is no Wide Guard. Instead, just a Bleak Wind Storm coming in. Bleak Wind Storm is actually going to miss the Calyrex as well. So the Ndidi does take a little bit more damage, but can this Lunala actually do something through this confusion? It will not. It's going to hit itself. Not for very much, but it means that it is free and open for this Astro Barrage. Alejandro did not fall into the trap that there might be a wide guard back to back, and that Tornadus is going to get taken down to its Focus Sash. 
Henry getting punished for, I think, a pretty risky path he was trying to take through this game, trying to just continuously attack through confusion. The first time it could have been a wide guard being prevented that would have uh, opened up that same Astral Barrage damage. This time it was what should have been a damaging attack in DDD um, that is instead just a confusion hit and Calyrex managing to pick up the KO. NDD can still try to redirect a, a Urshifu attack away. Uh, Calyrex should be bulky enough to take a Bleak Wind Storm. Of course, another Astral Barrage would just pick up two KOs here. So even with the speed advantage fully in Henry's favor, does have to be careful to not too easily allow Calyrex to get another attack off. You also have to worry about these boosts getting too out of hand. Like, if you allow both of those to happen, then the Pokemon you have in the back absolutely doesn't stand a chance if it's going to end up being a single target Astro Barrage with three boosts on top of it. So those Grim Nays can really start to stack up, and one of the reasons why we've seen these Calyrex forms be so strong in the meta. Absolutely. You cannot just take a sacrificial KO and expect to win in the back of that. The Follow Me looks like it creates such a safe position for Calyrex. We're going to have to see how this turn plays out. Yeah, it is going to draw the tension away for that Urshifu, but the Bleak Wind Storm just barely not able to pick up the KO onto the Calyrex. It's going to help keep the speed, though, down into Henry's favor, but you can see how yeah, those Surging Strikes would have been great to be able to hit into the Calyrex here. And with that little Grim Nave boost that this Shadow Rider was able to get on that turn before, well, it's going to for sure take this Tornadus down with it, but can it get the Urshifu as well with the Expanding Force for sure? Yes. Yeah, Life Orb boosted, Psychic Terrain boosted, Expanding Force super effective into Urshifu, no doubt about that KO, and so two KOs back. The Life Orb damage comes back into Calyrex. I think it's going to be close of whether this is a KO or not. Ooh, oh, it's not. It's not. It's going to be able to hang on. That is wild. Just a sliver of HP. And even though you have this Incineroar, you can't fake it out, even though it is such low health, and you're just going to have to take a huge, huge KO. Dundozo comes out of the back and makes things look even more difficult for Henry. And Cineroar, a great tool into Dundozo, but not a great tool for beating Dundozo all by itself. Calyrex, uh, it has taken two Bleak Wind speed drops. Should probably still be faster than Incineroar anyway. Could just threaten uh, an Astral Barrage for a ton of damage into that. Henry sees the writing on the wall, is going to concede this game and take us into a game three. Yeah, because with the Covert Cloak on the Dondozo as well, you can't just fake it out and stop the attack for one turn. You take a Wave Crash regardless and also an Astral Barrage. So really, really great set so far. Alejandro bringing it back in that second game, really leaning into the power, the supportive power of that Ndidi to help keep that Shadow Rider safe. If the Astral Barrage hadn't come through earlier, I think what's difficult, oh, and a total shift Whoa. I was going to say is difficult, is it's hard to stop the alluring voice from coming in onto Lunal on the turn. It gets the Psychic Seed boost, but none of that's happening here. Instead, it's Roll Boom on the field next to Don Dozo. A total shift up for Alejandro. Meanwhile, Lunala and Urshifu on Henry's side. Uh, a pivot there as well as Urshifu hits the field earlier in this game than in prior ones. But a pretty good adjustment, it looks like, from Alejandro because Roll Boom finds its way into the lead against Urshifu immediately this time. Doesn't have to try to catch uh, the Urshifu out of the back. And also, no uh, Incineroar led this game while two physical attackers are led for Alejandro, but that's an easy thing to fix. Urshifu can yes. just switch out and bring Incineroar in to intimidate both of these attackers. But is it telegraphed at all? Knowing that Urshifu does not want to stay on the field in front of something like a Rillaboom, do you then, as Alejandro, double into that slot, expecting to see some damage? doesn't opt for that. The U-turn into this Lunala will break the Shadow Shield, but this Dondozo gets a chance to maybe even get some of these boosts online. But you run the risk here, knowing that this Incineroar's on the field next turn to potentially go for a Will-O-Wisp to neuter the game plan that we saw in game number one. Let's see. I feel, I feel like it's just a tough call. Maybe you do get the wave crash into the Incineroar. That would be great. <laughs> That'd be a huge call to make, knowing that there was an Urshifu there just moments ago. Can't imagine the guts it would take for that call, but it is a wave crash coming out. Oh, it's in the Lunala. Okay. Pretty sizable damage, but the Lunala is able to stay on the field. So Moongeist Beam, as a response, that special defense boost, very, very helpful. Dondozo takes that pretty well, but it is still mounting damage onto Dondozo. Uh, no damage into Incineroar. That, that turn means that Incineroar is pretty safe to try to get a uh, 
by a Will-O-Wisp off if the Grass Terrestrialization is used. Of course, that is still committing a good amount of resources because you have to spin the Terrestrialization there instead of elsewhere. But if you can kind of disrupt Dundozo and take away that threat, then you can probably try to figure out how to win the game out of the back. Uh, Lunala takes a ton of damage there. It's going to be pretty low uh, for the end game. Even something like a Grassy Glide starts to look like it might be enough damage if you don't get extra Grassy Train recovery. And it won't be at this moment because Lunala switches out and gets Urshifu back on the field. Yeah, and there's going to be a terrestrialization here as well for this Incineroar. The Terra Grass is going to be really important to deal with both the Rock Slide as well as the Wave Crash. The thing is, is that this Dondoso does have a way around those resistances, having Order Up as an option to not only help get through some of the burns that this Will-O-Wisp does land, but also just to make sure that you're going to be able to deal some pretty big damage. Even though that wasn't very effective, you actually got a, a sizable chunk into that Urshi Flurry. But the burn comes through, it hits its target, and so that Dondozo is once again in the same predicament we were in game number one. Alejandro is playing this Dondozo very differently than he did in game one. Game one, it looked like he was playing it for more of a long-term game plan, trying to get order ups and boost and get a uh, pass to the Intimidates and make Dondozo a threat. I think it's some good recognition here that Incineroar is so, it's so easy for Incineroar to pivot in and out, to threaten a burn, that it's gonna be hard to establish Dondozo long-term. So instead, all Hunter just taking the short-term damage that he can get, getting a couple of big wave crashes in and weakening up Henry's team to try to instead find the win condition out of the back. But for now, Order Up is the best damage op option in Incineroar, where you can see just how little it does. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still gonna help a little bit, but the parting shot is gonna negate it once again. Um, and, and so it's it's tough. I think it's really tough here because this Dondozo, like, yes, you have to weave in some of that damage, but where's that damage now going to come from if you can continue to cycle through these Intimidates? It looks more and more difficult as time goes by. It's the uh, Dondozo Hokey Pokey, put your Intimidate <laughs> in, put your parting shot out. <laughs> um, and Dondozo just looks like it really won't be much of a threat to either of these Pokemon that's going to give time for a little bit of grassy train recovery into them and try to position for what you mentioned in game one, where if you can find the right combination of damage to get rid of Dondozo and Tatsugiri in one turn, that locks your opponent with just two Pokemon left and in a very difficult end game. Uh, Dondozo, though, even this mitigated can probably do all enough damage to Lunala to be a uh, threat to let, leave it for a Grassy Glide or Tatsugiri cleanup. And so instead, it's just Lunala coming back out, Incineroar coming back in, the Hokey Pokey continues, <laughs> and another Intimidate onto Dondozo. Yeah. I don't know if this is a dance that Alejandro wants to be dealing with, though, or the game, but uh, it is the game we are playing right now. And the Wave Crash just continuing to whittle away at this Incineroar, but continuing to do that is going to be is going to be fine. And even with these Surging Strikes, you're putting this Dondozo in a position where another bit of Surging Strikes will be able to pick it up, and there's not really a way for this Dondozo to easily get through this Urshifu now. The damage output from Dondozo just gets lower and lower as time goes by. Uh, Urshifu looking plenty healthy, Incineroar looking plenty healthy, and like you said, Dondozo should be in KO range from the next uh, surging strikes that opens up opportunities like surging strikes and knockoff to get rid of the bright powder and deal some damage into Tatsugiri <laughs> or parting shot to mitigate the damage from uh, Tatsugiri. I think interesting choice here just to protect even if it is surging strikes coming in, but it's not detect from no. Urshifu, and so uh, this protect will accomplish something for Dondozo. Well, it, it does, and it also blocks the parting shot here from this Incineroar. It's kind of like, do you get enough grassy terrain recovery back that you feel like you might be able to survive another surging strikes? I, I think it's tough when you know that the burn is continuing to even that scale. But the grass is gone. Grass is gone. The recovery is turned off. Uh, I'm not sure that surviving another surging strikes is that much in Dondozo's favor at this point. It might just set up for uh, future damage, but Rock Slide, oh, just so pitiful. At least maybe a chance for a flinch, but no, surging strikes just lands into Dondozo and picks up the KO. Yep, and that does leave this Tatsugiri vulnerable uh, for the parting shot, I guess. If it, if it hits. <laughs> I don't actually know how the Bright Powder interaction works for that because it's been a long time since we've seen Bright Powder as a health item. Oh, but the Incineroar flinches, so I guess we don't get a chance to see that regardless. Yeah, don't get a chance to see between the Bite Powder and the Rock Slide. Some <laughs> okay odds for Alejandro to get through that turn unscathed and manages it. Tatsukiri pops out uh, to be now a partner for the Calyra Shadow Rider instead of a partner for the Dondozo. I'm sure Alejandro, when he imagined this game plan, expected Calyrex Shadow Rider to come onto the field against a very weakened team. Wave crashes and rock slides spread everywhere, and everything looks like it's in Astral Barrage K range. That didn't really happen. Urshifu and Incineroar are still healthy here. But at least Incineroar did have to spin the Trastalization, means there's no Astral Barrage resist shown on the other side. Um, 
probably not enough damage to pick up the KO. Tatsugiri can add some extra damage of its own to create a KO. Alondra definitely has the speed fully in his favor, and it can be a little bit difficult to find enough path for Tornadus to come in. If Tornadus uh, tries to switch in to an astral into this situation, it just gets astral barraged and icy winded. Then you'll never find the speed control again. What's a very interesting modifier to this, though, is that we know that Tatsugiri has access to Helping Hand, and we have not seen this terrestrialization get spent yet on Alejandro's side. So this Caloric Shadow Rider is going to use it now, get that water terrestrialization, keep itself safe from the surging strikes from this Urshifu. It does open itself up to a close combat now, but who knows if that was actually what got locked in. The Helping Hand, though, ready and waiting to make sure this Shadow Rider Calyrex is going to be able to potentially pick up something. And a very, very risky switch in here for Henry to have brought in this Lunala to an incoming Astral Barrage. Yeah, maybe a risky switch, maybe just an acknowledgement that Lunala wasn't going to provide that much value in the game and something had to take the Astral Barrage there. Uh, and maybe you preferred to just let Lunala go down than to have the Incineroar take it. But of course, giving a Sacrificial KO over to Astral Barrage just means a boost comes in for the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Maybe there was a chance that Urshifu could take the Life Orb boosted, Helping Hand boosted Astral Barrage. Well, there's probably no chance it can take a Helping Hand boosted one. Uh, the terrestrialization on Halander's side does mean that Calyrex is vulnerable to fake out now, though. It's a pretty easy, like, fake out, close combat, double up into Calyrex that lands a ton of damage no matter what. Tatsugiri probably can't threaten a KO onto either of these Pokemon. And of course, we know that Henry's fourth Pokemon is Tornadus. And so at some point after a KO gets taken, Tornadus can come on the field and try to establish speed control. Yeah, and, and I think that it's tough because you also just can't protect in front of this Urshifu. Otherwise, you'd look at the Shadow Rider Calyrex having protect and go, oh, there's an easy way to deal with a fake out. But because of Urshifu's ability, it's not easy to just leave your Shadow Rider Calyrex on the field. So instead, you still have this Rillaboom in the back that'll be able to take that combination much better. On top of that, you now have the ability to re- set up that grassy terrain, giving an opportunity over to this Rillaboom to go for a priority grassy glide into this Urshifu, knowing that that terrestrialization was also already spent. And if Incineroar wants to negate this Rillaboom's attack stat, it has to go for a parting shot, or it's going to have to manually leave the field and come back in later. Ooh, all right. Speed drops, too, make this uh, fairly interesting. Do you think that the Urshifu is actually in range now where the Rillaboom could just go for Woodhammer? Uh, in speed range, yeah, I think the Rail Boom probably should be faster than the Urshifu. I also think between the close combat defense drop and the grassy terrain uh, X amplification on Rail Boom, it's in the offensive range for just a grassy glide to KO. Of course, Tornadus can just come in that slot, but because Tornadus is holding the Focus Sash, even if you just don't get a KO there, you're kind of happy to get uh, at least some chip damage in the Tornadus and open it up into Astral Barrage later on. I think Henry does a great job of using one turn of threat to undo a Grimnade boost, force Calyrex Shadow back into the back, but it still looks like the R Rillaboom is in a pretty powerful position here. And Sonora doesn't feel like it's offering that much. You can try to parting shot off the field to try to get Tornadus in and establish speed control that way. You can mitigate the damage output of either of these Pokemon and threaten to fake out again in the future, um, but you have to get through the turn first. Yeah, well, the helping hand into the Rillaboom. There is a detect coming through from the Urshifu, but the Incineroar is wide open if you want it. And that's going to be for the U-turn. And so super effective damage down into the Incineroar means that this Shadow Rider Calyrex gets to come back in. And because that Urshifu protected, it's not in range of being able to be knocked out at this very moment. But it feels like a great trade here for Alejandro in terms of that damage. It's interesting, I would expect a parting shot to now come out, uh, which is going to mitigate how much damage is coming from the Calyrex Shadow Rider. This starts to look a little bit different than when you had a grenade boost a second ago. Also means the parting shot's going to let Tornadus come back on the field. With Tailwind in Henry's favor, uh, Urshifu should be faster than the Calyrex Shadow Rider and able to get uh, uh, to threaten a close combat. The, the kind of one time that you can spend, I'm going to switch Rillaboom in and take it in close combat, has been spent already. Rillaboom, if it comes back in, will just go down to another close combat. Uh, and so this feels like it's Henry's opportunity to go out on the attack uh, and find damage into the Calyrex under speed control. The option for Grassy Glide is gone because the in, the real boom you turned into the back. You would have almost rather just had you turn for the damage without having to go into the back in that situation, I think. But it is real boom in the back and Calyrex kind of stuck on an island here. It is still tough, though, because even though you got the parting shot into the Calyrex, you can still drop your own special defense by going for the close combat. 
So maybe tipping the scales once again into that Calyrex's favor, but you're not going to be able to get that special defense drop uh, before the Calyrex gets to move unless you go for Tailwind. There was Icy Wind a while ago as well. The Icy Wind may True. make the difference in whether or not Tailwind actually puts Urshifu faster. And so Henry not going for that hit. Uh, the Tornado is just going to protect itself on this turn while Astral Barrage comes out. It's going to do a ton of damage to this Urshifu. Probably not the KO, though. Maybe not, but you still have to deal with the fact that this Urshifu is within a KO range. Oh, it is and, the KO. Uh, it is going to be a KO. Okay. That is um, maybe a little bit more damage than what Henry was expecting. And just like that, that Shadow Rider Calyrex is able to get that Groom Nae boost right back. Yeah, between the special defense drop and the life orb, even with minus one special attack from Parting Shot, Astral Barrage has the damage to pick up the KO into Urshifu. Uh, and now... Calyrex looks pretty stable, has grassy terrain that's healing off this damage. It's going to take a few hits uh, between R R Incineroar and Tornadus to actually KO Calyrex. And meanwhile, Calyrex is going to very contentedly keep firing off Astral Barrages. Calyrex should just be able to close out this game. I'm not really clear how Tornadus and Incineroar would put together the combination of speed and offense and bulk that would be unnecessary. But if there is a way, it starts with a fake out into Calyrex to buy a free turn. It does. And so this is going to carve an opening for this Tornadus to go for the Bleak Wind Storm. But the Tatsugiri is going to avoid it. It's going to be a double miss as well. So even if there was a way back into this game, this Calyrex is going to maintain a ton of HP. This Icy Wind as well to drop the speed of this Incineroar as well as this Tornadus. Just feels like it's going to put a lock on this game for Alejandro. Speeds continue to drop, damage continues to mount. Calyrex gets out of that turn unscathed despite taking a fake out and not protecting itself. Uh, Looks like it's all going Alejandro's way as Astral Barrage is going to come in and should just pick up two KOs. Absolutely does. And Alejandro takes this set 2-1 and moves to 5-0 on the day. Wow. What a fantastic adjustment from Alejandro, though, especially after Henry was 